In this chapter, we're going to look at some of the mathematics related to owning a small business. In this lesson, we're going to look at buying or leasing a vehicle. Okay, hi everybody. Now we're going to talk about buying or leasing a vehicle. So, in many cases, a business requires a vehicle to operate. Okay, that probably doesn't come as a big surprise to anybody here. And there are a few ways that you can go about doing this. Now, you can buy the vehicle for the full price, including tax. Okay, because yeah, remember, you always got to think about tax. Um, and if you can, by the way, that's in many cases, that's a great way to go about doing it. If you can just buy it outright, uh, you'll pay less that way. Or you might have to finance the vehicle. You take out, a, uh, you make a down payment, you take out a loan, and then you're going to pay uh, back the bank for the remainder of the purchase price, which means you're going to have to add interest to that. Okay, so you're going to be paying more for the vehicle than than what you than what it was uh, listed as, or you can lease a vehicle, making regular payments over the term of the lease. Now, you're probably vaguely familiar with what a lease is, and a lot of people say, "Well, it's like renting," and yeah, it is, uh, because you when you lease a vehicle, you're making these regular payments um, to, to have use of the the vehicle. Okay, or you can uh, you know lease an apartment or whatever sort of thing. A lease is similar to a rental agreement in that you make regular payments over a fixed time and the vehicle doesn't belong to you in the end here. Now, in these first two options here, the vehicle ends up being yours. Okay, you own it. Okay, so whatever value it retains at the end of this, that is yours. Now, it's, don't get me wrong. I, I made that sound like that was a great thing, but <laughs> in, in some cases, that's, that's not such a great thing. Okay, but in the case of a lease, what you're doing is you're you're paying the owner essentially for the the loss of value while you're using it. So we all know that when you when you drive a vehicle off of the lot, uh, whatever it was listed for, it's going to lose a bunch of its value very very quickly. Well, when someone drives the vehicle over a certain amount of time, even if they keep it in a, in immaculate condition, it's still going to lose value because of its use. Well, that's what you're doing in a lease. Typically, I mean, that's the main idea is you're paying back what that person lost in value on that vehicle. Now, some things to consider here with a lease, the term of the lease, okay, how long you're going to, to use the vehicle for, uh, the rate, so the amount of your monthly payments, uh, that, that's going to include taxes in there. I mean, I know it seems weird, but you're going to have to pay tax in there. Uh, there's going to be some interest charges because you're always going to pay, okay, to to have that ability to do that when you're paying on an ongoing basis. You're you're going to pay a little bit of interest. There's usually a security deposit, just like when you you like let's say rent a place. You're going to put a little bit of money up front, uh, which is basically you're giving them uh, the, to the owner, and the idea being that you're gonna you're gonna look after the vehicle and you'll get that money back when you're when you're done. Uh, there's usually a kilometer allowance. Okay, excessive driving causes excessive wear on the vehicle, which lowers its its uh, value quicker. So you're typically allowed a certain number of kilometers uh, a year without without penalty. Let's just call it, uh, interpret it as just regular use. It's only when you go beyond that that that's an issue. Uh, and then there's a, there could be a delivery charge where you pay at the beginning because they bring the car in for you. And then there's there's fees like environmental fees and there's taxes associated with that. And then now. That's all kind of up uh, talking about leasing the vehicle. At the end of the lease, in many cases, now not all cases, don't, don't get me wrong here, but in many cases, you've got the option to buy. And so there's this residual value. Well, what is the vehicle worth at the end if you want to buy it? Like you really like this vehicle. Uh, let's say you're, let's say it's like a, I don't know, it could be like, a, let's say like a bulldozer or a, like a backhoe or whatever. You're, you're leasing this to get your business off the ground and your business has done really, really well. So now instead of leasing it, because bear in mind, you don't own it at that point and, and a lease is just going to carry on uh, indefinitely. Maybe you decide, nope, we really like this. I'm going to use the money that we've earned to buy that, that, that value, uh, sorry, that vehicle here. That's what you would pay, the residual value. Now... I made that sound like uh, that the best idea there is to buy at the end of that lease, but that's not necessarily true. Maybe you've got a, a business going here where you like the idea of having a brand new vehicle, and like when you buy a vehicle and, and you own it, uh, you're probably not going to replace it in the next two or three years. 
Okay, you're going to you're going to drive it and and get a lot more wear out of it, get your value out of it. But with a lease, you could return it and then swap it for a brand new one. And keep going. So you've always got kind of a nice vehicle if if image is something that that's important to the the business. Not all businesses work like that. Not all businesses is that an issue for. So just a bunch of things to consider here. So now you've got the demonstration questions. You've got uh, some examples worked out here. I'm going to jump you to the examples that we would normally go through together, and I'll do those with you. Okay, so let's look at this question here. It says, Sheila lives in Saskatchewan and needs to buy a truck for her business. There are two options available to her. Uh, purchase a basic new truck for $22,789 plus 5% GST and 5% PST. Because remember, in Saskatchewan, they got to pay a provincial sales tax as well. She could purchase a used truck uh, with 120,000 kilometers on it, uh, but with many upgraded features. It would cost the same amount plus 5% GST as PST. Uh, sorry, plus 5% GST as PST is not paid on used vehicles in Saskatchewan. So how much would she pay for each truck? Well, let's take a quick look here. We'll call this A, we'll call this B. Okay, so for A here, what she's gonna do here, her total, well, first of all, she's gonna have the $22,789. That is the value of the truck. And we are gonna add to that 22,789 times 0 0.05. That's, that's our GST, 5% GST. Then we're gonna add to that 22,789 times 0 0.05, that's the PST, okay? So it's the value of the vehicle, so 22,789 uh, plus uh, that 5% uh, of that plus another 5% of that. So all together we're going to get uh, $25,067.90. Now, or we go to B, where she's purchasing the truck with 120,000 on it, but with many upgraded features, it would still cost the same amount plus 5% uh, GST. So in this case, she's still gonna pay $22,789, but this time she's only paying, okay, she's only adding the 5% GST to it. So now, oops, so I'm just on my calculator here. When I figure that out here, that's going to be $23,928.45. Okay, now give a reason for or against the purchase of each truck. Okay, well now number one here, number two here, um, let's take a look at B first of all. It's cheaper and upgraded. Well, that, I mean, that seems like a no-brainer. It's cheaper and it's upgraded, okay? However, A is new, and therefore it's gonna have a warranty, okay? So, yeah, see, although that B truck is cheaper and it's been upgraded, and that's, that's wonderful, um, it's gone 120,000 kilometers, okay? It's got a bit of wear on it, um, and so, and its warranty is, is likely gone. So if something goes wrong, that's on you. But with a new vehicle, if something goes wrong in the, in the first little while there, it'll be under warranty, it'll be covered. So those are things to consider while you're uh, looking at vehicles. So here we read, Victoria wants to lease a delivery truck. The terms of the lease are as follows. So it's a five-year term, monthly payments of $529.95, uh, the security deposit of $1,000. Now bear in mind, that comes back if it if the truck comes back in in good condition, and then a delivery charge of seven ninety two twenty seven. Well, you can't get around that. That's uh that's got to get paid. So how much would Victoria pay on the first day she picks up the truck? Okay. Well, on her first day here, she's going to pay a total of well, she's going to pay a thousand bucks. Okay. She's got to pay that security deposit. Now, do we pay the monthly payment at the beginning or at the end? Do you pay to use the vehicle or do you pay because you've used the vehicle? Okay, now uh, I would suggest here that in, in a lot of cases, um, the way that works here is you're gonna pay at the end 
So you pay that, that $529.95 at the end here. So this is really what you would pay right up at the front here. So at the beginning, it would be $1,792.27. Now, I'm, I'm hesitating a little bit on that uh, because of that monthly payment, but that's, that's what I'm assuming is the case here. Okay, because you pay after the, after the use there. Now, if Victoria returns the truck in good condition at the end of the lease, what is the total cost of the lease? Now, here we go. So her total is going to be, she's paying $529.95 per month. So this is coming out of her pocket. So that's 12 months for five years. Now, she doesn't need to worry about the, uh, the security deposit because if it comes back in good condition, she gets that money back but she still had to pay that $792.27. So now for her, the total value, because it's coming back in good condition, 529.95 times 12 times five minus 792.27, it's going to be $31,004.73. Okay, let's do another question here. Uh, Candace needs a car for her business. The purchase price of the vehicle she's interested in is $26,547. She's got three options. Okay, now we're going to have to probably work through all three of these. So let's call these A, B, and C. So we're going to lease it at $465, uh, $465 per month for a three-year term and buy it at the end for a residual cost of $13,539. Okay, I tell you what, we're going to have to go through each of these. So let's just do A first. So the total is going to be $465. Uh, per month for three years and then at the end we're going to add that thirteen thousand five hundred and thirty nine dollars okay so I'm going to go to my calculator here 465 times 12 times 3 plus 13 539 okay and so that is going to cost her thirty thousand two hundred seventy nine dollars or there's option B Lease it for four sixty five dollars per month over a three-year term. Okay, that's the same. Purchase it at the end for a residual value. Yep. Oh, for which she takes out a one-year loan with monthly payments of, of that right there. Okay. Now, listen. At this point right here, we're no longer talking about paying that $13,539 here. We need to focus on the payments here. These monthly payments are designed to deal with that. So now the total is going to be $465.00 times 12 times 3, but now we're going to add to that uh, a one-year loan where we're paying $1,146.67 12 times. Okay, so now 465 times 12 times 3 plus $1,146.67 times 12, and we're getting $30,000. $500.04. Okay, I'm getting a little bit short on space here, but option C, she can purchase it by taking out a bank loan over the th uh, three-year term for $766.12. Uh, okay, monthly payments for three years. Okay, so 766.12 times 12 times 3. And in this case right here, it's $27,580.32. And notice how buying in this situation is, is cheaper. Often it is cheaper in the long run to just buy. However, it might be, in, might be in, in almost every case it is, more expensive per month. Okay, now I know that we're done the examples here, uh, but there's uh, one of the exercises I, I want to go through and do with you. So we're going to go through and I'm going to jump you to one of the exercise questions because it's an important one. Okay. So here are the questions, this is number three. Lacey wants to lease a vehicle um, for her business under the following conditions. It's a five-year term, monthly payments of $295, security deposit of 500, okay, assuming it comes back in good condition, that we're gonna drop that. The delivery charge of 415. Now, here's the reason why I wanted to look at this one. Here we've got the kilometer allowance dealt with. So uh, she is allowed to drive 25,000 kilometers a year and that Anything beyond that, she's going to have to pay 15 cents per kilometer. Okay, so that's what I want to talk about here. The residual value at the end is $10,500, and that's going to include taxes and fees, anything that would go along with it. So that would be it. 
So the first question is, how much will it cost her to lease the vehicle for five years if she returns it in good condition, having driven 130,000 kilometers? Okay, well, first of all, before we get into anything here, let's deal with this 130,000 kilometers. She's going to, to do this for five years, okay? She is allowed, okay, she is allowed uh, 25,000 kilometers uh, a year, so five times 25,000 kilometers, okay, is going to be 125,000 kilometers. So her agreement allows her to go up to that amount. If she's under that, it's not an issue. But if she's over that, then it becomes an issue. So she is over, okay, her limit. So here's how the total is going to work. She is going to pay $295 every month for five years. We are not going to include the security deposit because it's gonna come back in good condition. She had to pay the delivery charge. There was no, it, uh, no debate about that. She had to pay that. And then she is going to pay 15 cents for every kilometer she is beyond that. So we're gonna go 130,000 minus 125,000, okay? Now, at this point here in this question, we're, we don't read that she's le gonna, going to buy the vehicle. Okay, that's just it. Just, this is how much the lease is for these five years. So 295 uh, times 12 times five plus the four, whoops, plus the 415 plus 0.15 times 130,000 minus 125,000. Okay, and so she is going to pay $18,865 for her for her lease. If she purchases the vehicle at the end of the lease, how much will she pay for it? Well, the total then is going to be the lease plus the residual value. So, well, we just figured out the lease was 18,865 and the residual value, where, where was it here? The residual value was 10,500. So we're just gonna add 10,500 to that Okay, so that's going to be 29,365. Now we got this last question here. If she buys the vehicle instead of leasing it, it will cost $21,000 including taxes and fees. What is the difference between purchasing the vehicle and leasing it and then purchasing the vehicle at the end of the uh sorry, what is the difference between purchasing the vehicle and leasing it and purchasing it afterwards here? Okay, so the difference here is going to be 29,365 minus 21,000. So 29,365 minus 21,000. And the answer is the difference is $8,365. Okay, so that's a huge difference here. So, you know, why wouldn't you just go ahead and buy it outright at the beginning here? Well, because in many cases, the truth is you don't know what's gonna happen and whether that's something that you're actually gonna want to do. Maybe when Lacey uh, started leasing the vehicle, she had no intention of buying it, okay? Uh, she didn't think she would. This seemed like the best option at that time. It's hard to tell. In a lot of cases, you are making guesses at what the future's gonna hold. So, but anyway, hopefully this gives you a bit of an idea as to how these sorts of things work.